In 2020, we partnered with Johannes Kepler University to pair a globally recognized research program with industry-leading data capture technology, all with the hope of taking big steps forward for the world of machine learning and mobile data capture. But how are we doing this? What is the end goal? And just how important is the work being done? Well, that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special and exclusive episode of Any Line, Anytime. So great to see so many of you watching today. Welcome to a new episode. In this episode, as I mentioned in the introduction, we're going to be looking at the partnership between us and Johannes Kepler University as we work together to move our industry and our technology forward. Joining us from the university is Hubert, a PhD student who's working with us on the research topics and a brilliant mind that will help to shed some light on these important questions and give us some in-depth analysis at what's going on behind the scenes. Also joining me uh, to help break down this discussion uh, into the significance of the partnership is our very own senior deep learning engineer, Demetrio. Gentlemen, so great to have you both. Welcome to the uh, podcast studio and welcome to uh, this episode. Great to have you both here. Hi, thanks for having me. Hello, thank you for having us here. Yeah, great to have you both and uh, very much looking forward to this conversation. So um, we appreciate appreciate the time. So let's uh, let's get right into it. I guess a good spot to start is going to be breaking down the elements of the partnership um, to their individual research elements. I know there's a few a few here. So Hubert, if I can come to you on this first, can you yeah identify for the audience uh, what these elements are? Um, so um, there are two core components in this collaboration. Um, the first is future learning. So uh, modern uh, deep learning algorithms need a lot of data, um, and future learning is the um, tries to um, leverage the power of, of deep learning methods by using just uh, a very few samples of data. And the second component uh, will be the transformer architecture. Um, it's fa- it is a fairly new uh, architecture. Um, it is in, um, very powerful. And I think we want to leverage this as well. Uh, yeah. Awesome. From our, side, <laughs> from our side, the goal of this collaboration is to basically utilize the fundamental research and that would help us to build new outstanding products. And on the other side, our partners from Johannes Kepler University could participate in solving real world use cases. So it sounds like a really good natural partnership where we're getting that research element from the university and your team, Hubert, and then pair it with us for the actual, uh, I guess, the practice of it in the real world, which is a really nice balance. So that's a really good understanding. Uh, yeah, thanks for that that brief scope. So I guess the big question here is why do we want to exploit them? What's the real business advantage here? Dimitri, I'll come to you on this. Um, well, definitely. As uh, Hubert already mentioned, uh, there are a few uh, components we're working on. The first one is a few shot learning. And those methods would allow us to train our machine learning models with as few examples as possible. And that would basically uh, require us to do less manual work and would lead us to the fast development and fast product delivery. And that basically in turn help us to serve our customers with a solution in a much shorter term. And the other example is the transformer neural networks. And those would help us to build more generic solutions for for our standard product, like universal uh, ID scanner. And of course, we're also interested in collaborating in GANs or generative adversarial networks, as those would allow us to synthesize a lot of labeled uh, data, which is essential for training highly accurate machine learning models. So it really comes down to being able to do more uh, with less. Exactly. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, great. Uh, Hubert, from your perspective, um, obviously coming at it from more of the research side, why do you think companies, I mean, ourselves included in this, why do they want to exploit this type of technology for their benefit? What, what is that? Mm, I think in the case of future learning, the answer is very clear for a company. Um, so in contrast, so we in, at, the, at the university, uh, at the academic level, we have a lot of data when we train a new neural network, for example. Um, but in real world problems, data is uh, very scarce. 
um, uh, especially labeled data. Um, and so companies are faced very often with the problem that, well, they want to have the power of, of machine learning, but they, it's, it's simply impossible to get the data to train the models. Um, so viewed from this perspective, it's, um, yeah, uh, it's very important for companies to, to um, go into this direction, I guess. And with respect to transformers, so um, I think, so it's not very often that a novel technique uh, appears uh, in machine learning that has such, uh, such an impact um, to, to our field. And transformers are such a kind of technique. So they are now used ubiquitous, not only for language, but also for vision and so on. And I think, um, so ultimately, I think for a company, it's crucial um, to assess the new de developments and um, to, to check uh, for future potential um, because they might lead to improvement in the product. Yeah. Okay, good. So, yeah, I think that really establishes a really good baseline for us to understand uh, Fuchsia Learning and Transformer Neural Network. So that's really great. So, again, thank you both for that. Um, now, it seems like from what you guys are saying that there's definitely significant value in moving these elements forward. And that's obviously why we're investing so much time and effort into these. Um, but not only from a technological development, but obviously there's many applications around the world that will benefit from this. Um, I mean, just simply being able to create a solution off of uh, having less data to begin with, I think, is a massive um, step forward. So I guess what's our ultimate goal? Now, obviously, yeah, we're trying to develop this technology but is there a finish line that we're working towards, Dimitri? Um, yeah, of course. Uh, first of all, we plan not only to develop the state-of-the-art technology, but basically with this transformer neural network and the fuchsia learning, we plan to push the whole industry forward by delivering uh, new outstanding products and really fast. Okay. And Hubert, from your end at the university, do your goals align with what Dimitri said? Is it the same or, or are there something more specific to the work you're doing? Um, so I think uh, the goals align um, from from the perspective of a university. For us, it's of course important to to gain new insights, to create new knowledge, um, and in future learning, for example, it's not only relevant for practitioners for companies. Um, I think it's also a very fascinating problem from the point of view of basic research. Um, so. As I said before, at the moment, algorithms need a massive amount of data, but there must exist other possibil uh, possible learning mechanisms. Uh, we know that because humans, for example, don't have to look up, uh, through 100 million images to, I don't know, um, solve a new task. Um, so I think the, the, the question uh, of um, how to learn from just a few samples, how to, to get a task done based on a few samples lies on the core uh, of what intelligence is. So it's, I think it's also in, uh, from, from, from the perspective of basic research, it's extremely interesting. Yeah. And beneficial, it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> well, it has to be, I guess, otherwise we wouldn't be doing it. Absolutely. Well, it certainly sounds like we're on our way. I think, uh, you know, a third of the way through our, our partnership. Um, sounds like everything is definitely full throttle in terms of the progress is being made, as well as uh, obviously really establishing that strong baseline now to benefit the next few years of, of research. Um, but how is that progress so far? Obviously, we, you know, we speak about the benefits and, and what the eventual goal is, but a third of the way in, how is the progress going? Well, for now, we are more focused on building the foundations for the next steps. And we are now basically focused on applying future learning techniques for our business use cases. Um, and in course of that, just stay tuned because we there's a blog post coming soon. Um, and another uh, thing where another uh, element here is the uh, transformer neural networks. And our goal here is to bring them to the world of mobile or CR as there are many pitfalls on the way because these networks are very large and computationally expensive. And um, here we would like to really investigate our uh, the ways to um, optimize these models. And I think our collaboration with Johannes Kepler University is a great opportunity for that. Um, I think, Hubert, you may comment here maybe a little, a little bit more from the research perspective. 
Uh, yeah, of course. So um, as Dimit Dimitro already mentioned, um, in with respect to transformers, uh, the, the goal is to systematically decrease the size of uh, of huge pre-trained transformer models. Um, they are they they are they are so huge that uh, normally you cannot really practically um, use them um, on on small devices, for example. Um, and there is already work on that. Um, so, for example. Um, what you could do are teacher-student settings where a smaller model learns from the bigger model and they work quite well, but they're still not small enough. Um, so the next step would, would be structural pruning um, where you try to get rid of some parts of the network, not only weights, but really parts. Um, and there are also some existing methods already um, but I think we can we can do, we can do a bit better even. The first thing is that we want to give the model the capability to learn for itself uh, which parts are needed and which parts can be omitted without um, decreasing performance. So while training, the network should figure out for itself. Okay, I I don't need this part. I can throw it away. Yeah. Um, the next thing is that. Um, those those models in general are for 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 fine tuning tasks. They are highly overparameterized. So normally, what, what they do is you tr you pre train you pre pre train these models on a huge data set, and then for your given task you fine tune it. So the pre training task is way more difficult than your fine tuning task. So it's very likely that you you only need a, a small part of this network. So before um, getting rid of some parts, you can already get rid of a lot of layers um, from this model. And the third thing um, we investigate is um, the attention, the attention mechanism, which is fairly expensive. Um, and what we found out is that this attention mechanism um, in a lot of heads, the only, the only um, task of this uh, uh, attention mechanism is to average. So there is not really attention going on. Um, it even it even is enough, for example, if you fix those attention weights uh, heads, um, and you you really don't need all the operations inside of them. Um, also, they operate very often in a lower dimensional space, so you can get rid of them as well. Um, and if you combine all those three th things, um, then I think we, 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 we can get really to a, a size where it's usable for, uh, for any line, for example. Yeah. Okay. So I guess, uh, I guess a simple way to think of it is anything that you're developing and, and you want to, we can't have it be heavyweight for the majority of customers, especially when what we do a lot relies on the agility and the mobility factor. So in order to make that functional for everyone, it needs to be in the smallest package, but also as, as uh, functional. Like we can't lose functionality by reducing size. So your guys' job is really in this respect to find what can be reduced, where can it be reduced for the most impact? Like what, what weighs the most and, and contributes the less, I guess is the right way to look at it, right, Hubert? Yes, that's um, very well put. <laughs> that's my layman's terms of it. Yeah. Uh, the, the detail you, you um, give is fantastic, and I think it's super practical for, for those listening. And concerning the second topic, so last year uh, we developed a novel um, future learning uh, method in our institute, uh, in our group. Um, and so the basic idea here is um, that... If you train, so um, if you train a huge model that already knows a lot of the domain, um, then it's probably enough to have a very fast, small network on top of it um, that can leverage the knowledge from the from the network. Uh, in contrast to to training the whole network again. Um, so this is the basic idea, um, and there are multiple ways how, how we can do that. So in the first version, um, 
a colleague of mine, so he used uh, Hebbian learning. Hebbian learning is a very fast sort of learning, a fa very fast kind of learning. And in the future, we want to combine this with something else we developed in our, uh, in our group. Um, we developed a novel kind of associative memory, a Hopfield network. Um, and we want to use this Hopfield network uh, on top for future learning, for example. So, yeah. Okay. So lots of different elements coming into play to contribute to our main goal. Exactly. Yeah. Really good. Okay. Well, it certainly sounds like there's a lot of ambitious targets and ambitious projects at, at work here. You know, as I mentioned, we're a third of the way through. Um, and then have you, as you both mentioned, it sounds like really the core of this past year has been to establish that really good baseline that will accelerate the next two years to really get the most out of it. I think that's pretty accurate, right, Dimitri? Exactly, yes. Basically, our focus now is to research different directions and establish what we can do, what we can apply in some for some particular neural networks, what would work for the future, and what we can basically, maybe some ideas we can already reject and something we can uh, use later. Uh, so far, uh, future learning uh, methods look very promising and I hope they will work really very well for us. Yeah, it seems like that's where a lot of that benefit is, is in that few shot learning because it essentially allows us to create things much faster exactly. for us and for customers when we're looking at our trainer product, um, you know, for them to come in with a lot less data and come up with that custom solution, no matter what they're trying to capture data for. They don't need thousands of examples. They're going to need just a few by the time we're done. Exactly. Yes. Uh, See, I understand this. This is fine. I get it. <laughs> yes. Now, you guys have done a brilliant job at explaining. If I can understand it after you've explained it, your guys' job is done. <laughs> so that's really great. So again, thank you guys so much. It really looks like we're just dipping our toes into what's going to come over the next few years, um, which is exciting. Um, yeah, certainly things to look forward to. Uh, you know, congratulations to both of you on a, a great first year at establishing that strong baseline, establishing scope. For what's to come, uh, we'll certainly keep the audience up to date. You know, as you mentioned, we have a blog coming out shortly, which will dive into more detail here, uh, which is possible. And I know that you are really stretching the length on the size of that blog. So the audience can look forward to reading that. But of course, we'll do follow ups, uh, you know, in the coming years with how how it's going so that the audience is well in tune with that. So, again, really, really appreciate you guys being here. Um, yeah. Before we sign off, anything else that you want to add, Hubert? Um, well, I just want to emphasize how um, valuable this collaboration is also for us as an uh, academic group. Um, for us, it's, it's crucial to, be, uh, to, to, to do basic research, uh, to um, just contribute to the advancement of the whole field. And I think um, I, it's very cool that, that uh, the, the topics align so well here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I completely so, agree. That's like that perfect marriage of you know, we want to get out of it just as much as you do. And I think that's a key component to a successful project is having that aligned um, direction. And I guess that aligned uh, passion for what we're doing. Exactly. So, yeah. We are really enjoying this collaboration with uh, our partners from Johannes Kepler University. Of course, we have uh, extensive knowledge exchange and there's some awesome technologies which are coming soon. Which is really good. And, and I like how you said a knowledge exchange because it's a perfect way to phrase it. You know, we're really working together on this. This is us together. You know, the distance is one thing, but of course we deal with this. We want the same goals out of it, essentially. Uh, and we're bringing our, our own knowledge bases into it. Um, exactly. So that's a really nice, nice way to word it. Perfect. Good. Well, again, uh, a big thank you to both of you, uh, Dimitri and Hubert. Really appreciate you being here and explaining this to, to me, which I appreciate, and to our audience, of course, uh, who I know is going to appreciate it. Um, yeah. As Dimitro mentioned, we're going to have a blog coming out very shortly, which we'll dive more into detail here. Um, exactly. yeah. S stay tuned. Stay tuned. I love it. I got to get you on this more. You're great. All right. <laughs> stay tuned for more coming up. Perfect. Good. Again, thank you guys so much for being here. Really, really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I wish you the best in the coming years. Thank Thanks. you, guys. Perfect. Bye. And to everyone watching, again, thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate you being here. Uh, to learn a little bit more about this research partnership between us at AnyLine and Johannes Kepler University um, as we explore transformer and few shot learning uh, and really progress these technologies forward. So hopefully lots for you to take away and absorb. 
uh, from this episode. As Dimitri mentioned, and we've, we've mentioned a couple of times, there is more content coming out on this very shortly. So stay tuned uh, right here on this platform and you'll see that content coming out shortly. Of course, if you have any questions about anything we spoke about today, probably best not direct them towards me, but I'll make sure these questions get towards Dimitri and Hubert. You can either contact them directly via LinkedIn uh, or just go ahead and comment on this video and we'll make sure to get those answers for you as soon as possible and as in much depth as possible. So wishing you a fantastic day. Again, thank you so much for watching today and we'll see you on the next episode. Uh, and until then, of course, stay happy, stay healthy. We'll talk to you then.